Hello, I'm Al from Old Mission Boat Company, and today we're going to discuss epoxy basics. Epoxy is a commonly used material in wooden boat construction. It is used to seal wood, apply fiberglass, and create strong joints and bonds. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to set up, prepare, and use your epoxy. Before we start, let's take a moment to review proper safety procedures when working with epoxy. It is important to protect both yourself and your workspace. Always wear gloves when working with epoxy and avoid contact with your skin. You should also wear a dust mask, especially when sanding epoxy or fiberglass and when using thickening agents. Eye protection is also recommended, particularly when using foam rollers, which can cause splatter. Epoxy creates a permanent bond, so you should always cover your workspace, including tools such as clamps and blocks with plastic wrap or parchment paper. Depending on your work environment, you may also consider covering your floor to protect it from drips and spills. Epoxy is a two-part adhesive which uses a special hardener to cure the epoxy resin. This means that as soon as the resin and the hardener are mixed, the epoxy begins to cure. The amount of working time once the epoxy is mixed is called the pot life, and this varies depending on the type of epoxy and the ambient temperature. The epoxy included in Old Mission Boat Company kits has a pot life of approximately 30 minutes at 70 degrees, and the pot life gets shorter at warmer temperatures. Never use your epoxy when the ambient temperature is less than 60 degrees, as this may prevent it from curing properly. Epoxy looks and feels dry before it has fully cured. However, it should not be sanded until you are certain the curing process is complete. Allow 12 hours for the epoxy included in your Old Mission Boat Company kit to fully cure. When epoxy cures, it may leave a waxy film on the surface. This is called blushing, and it is common with fast curing epoxies. You should always clean the surface of blushed epoxy by rinsing the surface with water and an abrasive sponge. The epoxy included in your kit is designed to minimize blushing, but it is best to check after your epoxy has cured and clean any affected areas. The first step in setting up your epoxy is to prepare the pumps. Insert the extension tube into the bottom of the pump and make sure it is seated tightly. Place the tube next to the bottle of epoxy to ensure the extension tube is the correct length. Old Mission Boat Company kits with a half gallon bottle of epoxy will include a special short extension tube which has been pre-cut to the correct length. Next, uncap the bottle of epoxy, insert the pump, and screw it tightly onto the top of the bottle. Do this for both the bottle of resin and the bottle of hardener. The next step in setting up your epoxy is to prime the pumps. To do this, begin pumping slowly. Make sure you allow the pump to return to the top of its stroke between each pump. As you pump, the epoxy will begin to intermittently flow from the pump. Continue pumping until there is a continuous stream of epoxy during the entire stroke of the pump. Your pump is now primed. Repeat this process for the other bottle of epoxy and discard the epoxy you pumped out during the priming. In order for the epoxy to cure properly, the resin and hardener must be mixed in a precise ratio. Old Mission Boat Company uses epoxy which is mixed in a two to one resin to hardener ratio. This means that for every one pump of hardener, you must use two pumps of resin. Never use epoxy that has been mixed at the wrong ratio. If you lose count while pumping, discard the epoxy and the mixing cup and start again. When you pump epoxy, 
Always pump slowly and make sure you allow the pump to rise completely to the top of its stroke before pumping again. This will ensure that you always mix the correct amount of resin and hardener. If you haven't used your epoxy for several weeks, watch carefully as you pump. You may need to reprime your pumps if there is not a continuous flow of epoxy. Once you have pumped your epoxy into a mixing cup, use a stirring stick to begin mixing. The resin and hardener must be mixed thoroughly to ensure a properly cured epoxy. Stir slowly and smoothly to prevent creating air bubbles in the epoxy mixture. It is also important to scrape the sides and corners of the mixing cup to create a completely homogeneous mixture. A single batch of epoxy should be sufficiently mixed after a couple minutes of stirring. As we mentioned at the start of the video, epoxy has many uses in wooden boat construction. The most common uses are sealing wood, laying fiberglass, using the epoxy as an adhesive, creating strong joints with fillets, and making the surface of the boat smooth and fair. We will cover each of these techniques in the remainder of the video. If you would like to review these techniques later in your project, we have included links to each segment in the description below. When using epoxy to seal wood, it can be applied directly after mixing. There are many options for applying it to your wood surfaces, such as foam brushes, chip brushes, foam rollers, and rubber or plastic spreaders. Remember, you can't clean epoxy out of a brush, so don't use an expensive paint brush as it will have to be discarded after only one use. Move slowly when applying epoxy. As epoxy has a very high viscosity, more of a syrup consistency. It will not spread evenly if you brush or roll it too quickly. When coating a large area, we recommend using a wide plastic spreader to spread the epoxy and then smooth it with a brush. When applying fiberglass, begin by placing the fiberglass cloth on the dry wood surface. Once you have positioned and smoothed your fiberglass, pour epoxy onto the middle portion of the cloth and use a plastic spreader to work the epoxy out to the edges. Make sure you apply firm pressure to the glass as you work. This will ensure the fiberglass is adhering to the wood and not floating on the surface of a pool of epoxy. When applied correctly, this first coat will look dry and the texture of the glass will be clearly visible. If the surface of the fiberglass looks smooth and shiny, there is way too much epoxy. You may need to work the fiberglass repeatedly to achieve the proper dry and textured appearance. To trim the edges of your fiberglass cloth, wait several hours until the epoxy has cured to a gel. This is referred to as the epoxy being green. In this state, you can easily use a knife to trim the edge of the fiberglass close to the edge of your wood. To achieve a smooth surface finish, you will need to apply at least one additional coat of epoxy. This fill coat can be applied while the original epoxy is green. Alternatively, you can wait for the original epoxy to fully cure. If you do this, remember to first rinse the surface to remove any blush that may have formed during the curing process. Epoxy can be used to create strong joints with a process called filleting. A fillet is a bead of thickened epoxy which covers the seam where two plywood pieces intersect. To create a fillet, you will first need to thicken your epoxy. This strengthens the epoxy and ensures that the fillet holds the proper shape after being applied. Begin by mixing a normal batch of epoxy. Then, add the thickening agent, a little bit at a time, mixing it into the epoxy as you go. Continue thickening the epoxy until it has reached the consistency of peanut butter. <music> 
If you add too much thickener and your mixture becomes dry, simply add more unthickened epoxy. Once the epoxy is thickened, it is time to spread it onto the joint. This can be done several ways. First, you can put the thickened epoxy into a Ziploc or pastry bag, cut a small hole in the corner, and apply it like you're frosting a cake. This is the cheapest solution, though it can take time to master laying a consistent bead. An alternative is to put the thickened epoxy in a fillable caulking tube and apply a bead with a caulking gun. If you run out of thickened epoxy before you are finished filleting, push a metal rod through the nozzle of the caulking tube to extract the plunger and refill the tube. Once a bead of epoxy has been applied to the joint, it is time to shape the fillet. The shape and size of the fillet is controlled by the radius of the filleting tool. A standard tongue depressor will work for most fillets on thin plywood. Watch our Epoxy Basics video on filleting for tips on making a custom filleting tool. Simply place the filleting tool into the joint and pull the epoxy along by dragging the tool in one direction. Tilting the filleting tool about 45 degrees in the direction you are moving will help move excess epoxy along the joint. Epoxy can also be used to bond or laminate wood. For most applications, you will want to use thickened epoxy. In this instance, thicken the epoxy until it has reached a yogurt-like consistency. This will ensure the epoxy stays in the joint and is not completely absorbed by the wood. Once your epoxy is thickened, spread it evenly on one or, if possible, both faces of the joint. Completely cover the bonding surface. It is better to apply a thick layer and let it squeeze out of the joint rather than apply too little. Align the pieces and clamp them in place. Don't forget to cover your clamps and your blocks to prevent gluing them to your work. Once the pieces are clamped in place, use a rag or scraper to clean up the epoxy that squeezed out of the joint. This will minimize the time required to later sand and finish the pieces. Thank you for watching our video on Epoxy Basics. Remember, there are links to specific segments in the description below should you need to refer back to this video during your project. If you're interested in learning more about using epoxy, we recommend purchasing the book, The Gujan Brothers on Boat Construction by Meet Gujan. This is an excellent book which covers the use of epoxy as well as general construction techniques. Please visit our website to see the full range of boat kits and boat building supplies we offer. Thank you. Thank you.